Well, thank you so much for joining me today. So my first choice of study personally would never be math. Why math? What was it about math that engaged with you or kind of caught, caught your attention? So I think a lot of people have a very limited conception of math um, that's based probably on their experiences of school. Math is actually this really beautiful, elegant, um, powerful way that we have to think about the universe and uh, to think about the world. And But really, it wasn't until I, I went to the Jackman Institute for Child Study, that's where I did my master's degree, and I met uh, Dr. Joan Moss, who eventually became my thesis supervisor. And she was doing a lot of work with little kids and their understanding of fractions. And it was just so fascinating to think about how to get in there because as human beings, we come to the world hardwired to think about language, we know that, but we're also hardwired to think about quantity and space. And so how do we harness that innate capability of thinking about numbers into some uh, really powerful math instruction. And then when you add the other cultural perspectives, like the work I've been doing with First Nations and Métis knowledge keepers and community partners, then it gets really fascinating. Let's delve into that. You are uh, working right now on research that works to help create that culturally responsive mathematics education uh, system for students in Ontario. I can imagine, uh, and uh, you know, based on some of your research, you know, it, when we were in school, we learned there was a, there was a dominant culture that, you know, we are, we're taught through yeah. uh, a lens that we're taught through. And, you know, you never really thought about the obstacles um, that uh, different cultures went through within that system. Uh, when did you start thinking or delving a little bit further into that? Um, and, you know, can you take us through a little bit of what your research, you know, where it started from and, you know, where you are right now? Yeah, so I've been doing this work for nine years, 10 years <laughs> with, um, with communities across Ontario. And now we've been working with communities in Saskatchewan and Alberta. But this really started when I was up teaching in Thunder Bay and I was teaching a master's course in Thunder Bay during the summer. And there were um, a lot of my students were um, from Northern communities. The other piece of that too was, you know, all of all of the learning I had been doing around things like residential school and the the atrocities and just the the horrible history um, that we that as a country we have with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. And I was thinking, well, how can I be part of the solution? How can I how can I contribute um, to making things better? And I thought, well, the only thing I really know how to do is teach math. <laughs> It started off as this very small project. Um, the, the first year, actually, I worked with my colleague, Danielle Blair, who at the time was seconded with the ministry. And so the first year we just spent meeting with elders and knowledge keepers and learning ourselves so that we were even in, in some way, shape or form able to even start to think about this project. Um, so we spent a year doing that and then in the second year, we met uh, the most fantastic woman, Christina Ruddy, who is an artist from uh, the Algonquins of Pickwaknagan First Nation. And we had, we had this proposal, like we'd, we watched her do loom beading and we could see all the math potential in loom beading. And we said, we wanna do this project. And we connected with some teachers at Eganville and District Public School. And we've been going strong ever since there. And so that, <clears throat> was sort of the central site initially of the project. And from there, it's just grown and grown and grown. And so we're in, we've been to, I think we're up to 15 research sites around the province now, working with different communities, working with different school boards. And it's just been this lovely, lovely, amazing journey of discovery for everybody. And at the heart of it has been these amazing relationships that we've built with communities. So we work in collaboration with community partners. So we, um, we consult with community first before we do any work. And then we have a small team that gets together to co-plan and co-teach and then co-reflect on the teaching. Uh, and then we share it out. The thing I love about this work is that everybody feels that it's theirs 
that that they are they are the project and they are the study and they are the work that's going on and so that's why i think it's been able to continue and to grow in a way that's been really good because one of the things i worry about of course is as a non-indigenous person is this idea of cultural appropriation we set up uh, teams of advisors with all the communities that we work with to ensure that we do the work in a good way and so it's the thing that I think I'm most proud of in my life and the thing I want to continue to do for the rest of my uh, research career, certainly.